Okay, so hey guys, how's everybody doing? Um, we are going to talk about the the shell sword in this in this video. So the shell sword is um, a so-called variation of the insertion sword, but I think there's only one thing that is similar, and we'll get to that uh, in the in, in the further end of this video. But I don't think there's a lot of uh, similarities between the insertion sword and the shell sword. Of course, they say that it's a variation, but but take that with a grain of salt. Um, the way this basically works is that you are pointing to, um, in the array which you are considering, you're basically pointing to two different portions or two different elements which are at a distance from each other. So that is called as the gap. That distance is called as the gap. And you basically uh, move further in the array. So suppose in this case you're pointing to 12 and 54, then you'll be pointing to 34 and 2, then you'll be pointing to 54 and and three, and then you uh, reduce the distance, and so on and so forth. But there's also an element of the insertion sword which is in there, and which we will be discussing. Um, so yeah, so let's let's talk about this. So the first thing that you need to understand is you need a, um, an array, you need the length of the array, and you need basically a function which will sort the array. So I've called a shell sort function, here, and this is just basically uh, for giving the output. So let's let's start by writing the actual algorithm. So the first thing that you need to define is the gap. The gap is, as I said, going to be the distance between the two elements which you're going to consider. So in, in bu bubble sort, the gap is uh, basically one because there's only one element between um, that there's basically a difference of one in the index of the elements that you consider. Here, you're going to start with a gap of int gap is equal to length divided by two. So your gap is going to be initially, your gap is going to be half of, of the length. So for example, let's say if you're starting with gap equal to, and this is going to be equal to initially. So if the length is equal to five, your gap is going to be equal to two. So you're starting with a gap of two. So what, what, what kind of uh, dis distance or what, what elements can you map with, with a gap of two, uh, with the gap of two initially? So you have, if you have a 12 and then you'll be having 54. Why? Because uh, the index of 12 here is zero. And if you add two to the index of 12, you get 54 because zero plus two is two. So zero, one, two. So you'll be basically pointing to 12, 54, uh, 34, two, 54 and three. And then you'll basically uh, do whatever changes you want on top of them um, and however you want to do it. So the next line which you're going to write is while gap is greater than zero, do something. So while gap is greater than zero, so your gap has to be greater than zero because if gap is zero, if your gap is actually equal to zero, zero plus zero is zero. So you're basically comparing uh, the element with itself. So that there's no point in comparing the element with itself, right? So whenever the gap is equal to zero, uh, you gotta be able to, you know, you gotta be able to eliminate or end end of the loop. So uh, before writing the actual meat of the program, I also want to write something at the end of it. I want to write how you're gonna change the gap as you progress through all the iterations. So there are going to be the, the iterations which you're going to go through are, are going to be based on the gap. So after this iteration finishes, you're going to change the value of the gap, right? So you're going to make the gap half of its actual value. So your next gap is going to be equal to gap divided by two. So that's going to be your next gap, right? So your gap progression is going to be half of what the previous gap was. So if your gap, you start off with two, the next gap will be one and the next gap will basically be, be zero because one divided by two will give you a point value and integer of 0.5 is going to be zero, right? So that's, that's how you are going to ensure that you're, you're coming up with the right kind of gaps. So the next part is while uh, you do this, you, you need to set up something uh, like an int j. Int j is equal to zero. Now, now this int j is, is going to be a pointer which you're going to use for pointing to different parts in the array. Now, I don't want to uh, initialize this inside the for loop because I want this to, I, I want to access the value of j even outside the for loop. So I, I want to make this somewhat of a semi-global variable uh, so that I can access uh, that value from, from even outside the for loop, which I'm going to create over here. So for int i equal to gap i less than length i plus plus and, and we're going to do something over here. So, so what am I going to do? So what I'm going to do over here is, as you might have figured out, if i is equal to gap, right? If i is equal to gap, it means I'm starting from, from basically the index of 54 because gap right now is equal to two when I say length by two. So 54. Now, if I subtract, okay, if I subtract gap, okay, the value of gap from the i over here, the reason, the 
the fact that they both are equal gives me a value of zero, which means it will point to over here. So that is a very important property for you to understand. If my gap value is, is two, or if my I value is two, if I'm pointing to 54 right now, if I subtract by the gap, I'll get the value which I want to be comparing with. So subtracting by gap gives me the value that I want to compare with when I'm starting. So, so that's, that's what it is. You're basically going to start, you're always going to start with I equal to gap. So then you progressively increase the value and then you still subtract by gap and that's, that, that, that's how you get the progressive uh, numbers which you're going to compare with. You get a better understanding once we, once we go further in this. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to say int temp is equal to L of I. Now L of I, so L is obviously going to be my array. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the value of what L of I is pointing to right now. So what is L of I pointing to? In this case, I, I is going to be equal to 2, right? is going to be equal to two because gap is two. So this is the first iteration we're going to consider. So what's happening is temp is becoming filled with the value of 54 because L of two is 54. So 54 is in temp right now. Remember that 54 is in temp right now. So once 54 is in temp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a for loop for and, and, and be with me here. This, this is going to take a little bit of um, of patience, okay, patience, have patience. J is greater than or equal to gap and L of I minus gap is greater than temp. J minus equal to gap. And then I'm going to say L of J, be with me here, stay with me. L, oh, wait a second. L of J minus gap. And then you have L of J is equal to temp. Now, what did I do over here? As you can see, temp really co uh, consists of 54 right now. The value of temp is 54 because L of 2 became temp, right? So L of 2 was 54. So what basically happens is what I'm doing right now is I'm giving the value of I to J. Now, J is going to be my, my pointer. So J right now has the value of I. The reason we created J was because I did not want to alter the value of I in this particular for loop. I did not want to change the value of i because as you can see here, the value of i is supposed to change if I used i. So I don't want to use the value of i because I don't want it to change. So I'm, I'm putting the value of i in a decoy and the decoy basically is j, the decoy. The decoy is j. So j right now is equal to the value of i because I gave that value to j. Then we are checking if j is greater than or equal to gap. The reason we're checking if j is greater than or equal to gap is because we are going to subtract the value of j from gap, uh, the value of gap from j. And once we subtract it, we don't want to get any negative values because if we get any negative values, we'll be saying um, something like L of minus one, for example. And, and there is nothing. L of minus one doesn't exist. An array is not supposed to have a negative index. So we cannot, we cannot have a negative value of gap. And what do we want to do? What is the reason we are doing this? We want to increment by selecting like this, you know, having a distance, comparing elements, then comparing this one and this one, and then comparing this one and this one by keeping a constant gap. So that's why we are doing this over here. L of J is equal to L of J minus gap. Remember that? Remember what we talked about? Okay. Now you might be wondering, hey, Quinston, why don't you just swap it like normal? Like why, why wouldn't you just swap the elements? Because that's what technically is happening, right? Why can't you just compare these elements and swap them? Because we want to do that here, but we are technically not doing the same thing. We're not actually swapping. So what we're doing is I'm taking the value of 54. I'm putting in a temp. I'm putting it in temp. Then what I'm doing is I'm basically checking if the value of I minus uh, gap, okay? The value of I minus gap, sorry, it's not supposed to be I, it's supposed to be J. And that, that was kind of stupid of me, I'm sorry. So the value of J minus gap, because obviously J minus gap, J minus, it has to be the same thing. So L of J minus gap, which is going to be 12, is that greater than temp, which is 54 right now? Is 12 greater than 54? The, we are creating an ascending order array. So they are not greater, right? This is 12 and this is 54. They're not greater than each other. 12 is not greater than 54. So what you do is you don't execute this, you jump out of the loop, and you say L of J is temp. So basically, you know, 54 just got replaced by 54 again because L of J is actually L of two. So there was no follow-up execution. The reason being that 12 is not greater than 54. Now let's take a different example. Let's say you come back up over here and you go I plus plus, okay? You go I plus plus. Now with I plus plus, what basically happens is you are saying that um, I's value is three right now, right? I is equal to 
3 right now. So if i's value is 3 right now, what is temp? Temp will be L of i. L of i is going to be equal to 2. So this value is going to be 2. So temp basically has the value of 2 inside of it right now. And then what you do is you again use a decoy because you don't want to change the value of i. What you do is you say i is equal to j. i goes to j. Once i goes to j, what basically happens is what basically happens is j becomes j becomes 3. Now j is also 3. Now then you basically check if j is greater than or equal to gap. Of course, j is greater than 3 because gap is still equal to 2. So, okay, yeah, gap is equal to 2. I need to write that down because, okay, it's not very obvious. So gap is equal to 2, j is equal to 3 because you said i is equal to j and i is 3. You know that, okay, pretty simple. Then j becomes 3. And then what you do is you subtract the value of gap from j. j is 3, gap is 2. Then j3 minus 2 will become L of 1. Is L of 1 greater than temp? Temp is 2. L of 1 is 34. Is that greater than 2? Well, it is. And so what happens is you basically say that L of J is equal to L of this one over here. So this becomes 34 over here. This becomes 34. This part over here becomes 34. And once that becomes 34, you basically notice something. And you say, Quinston, wait a second. Why are they the same values? Because when you understand temp right now holds 2. Now what you do is you say j minus equal to gap. Now when you say j minus equal to gap, what is the value of j? The j value right now is equal to 3. So when you say j minus a uh, gap, it becomes j minus 2, which becomes 3 minus 2, which, um, which is equal to 1. Now you start doing the for loop again. But as, we, as, as I told you, when you say uh, 1 greater than or equal to 2. No, it doesn't cut it. So basically, you cannot execute this problem. Similarly here, 2 minus, uh, um, 1 minus 2 will give me a value of minus uh, 1, right? Which, which basically cannot be even existing. It doesn't exist over here. So what I do is you come out of this and you say L of J, which is L of uh, 2 right now, L, L of 1 right now, L of J, L of 1 will be equal to 10, which is 2. So that, that's how this becomes... Two over here and that's why you basically start sorting or swapping the elements and you know it's not a normal swap what you're basically doing is what you're basically doing is you're adjusting the values and that's when I said that this is an insertion sort variation the variation of insertion sort is only this part over here this part over here the rest of it is a different algorithm completely so the insertion sort if you remember what it does is it takes an element in the it takes an element in the array and whatever elements come before it, it tries to sort those elements before it goes further into the array. That's what we're doing here. When we get to this element, for example, we want to sort everything behind it, but not exactly everything. We want to sort all the elements with the same gap. With the same gap. We are not going to sort elements exactly one behind each other or two behind each other or three behind. We want to sort the elements with exactly the value of gap behind each other and that's exactly what we're doing in insertion sort the gap is equal to as you can say one here you have a varying gap and that's why the shell sort is a variation of the insertion sort not a lot but a, but a distinct variation because in the insertion sort the value of gap is one and here the value of gap changes that's why you say j minus equal to gap because you want to first adjust all the elements behind the element you're targeting right now to be equal to gap and that's how this algorithm basically works and and as you, as you can see once we complete that entire loop you are reducing the value of gap by half and eventually the gap is going to be equal to one which 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 is actually the execution of the insertion sort which is actually kind of beautiful if you ask me now um we just wrote the algorithm i'll show you an animation which i created just to uh, force feed you the or spoon feed you the algorithm even further so let's take a look at that so as you can see this is the algorithm which we were talking about um you basically have uh the the elements over here and this is the execution so in the gap is equal to length by two you have length by two and you have five by two which is the length is five right now two and two becomes the gap over here next you move to the next line you check if gap is greater than or equal to zero well it is and they say j equal to zero so j is equal to zero right now then you check over here you have these values which come up then you go in temp, you take the temp value, you say L of i is equal to temp. L of i, i is right now 2, which is the reason you say this. So 54 is your value. 54 goes inside temp, as we talked about in the earlier uh, part of this tutorial. Next, you check for the condition. The condition basically says that j is equal to i. So 
j becomes equal to i, i is 2, j is equal to 2, your j is greater than or equal to gap. Uh, is j greater than or equal to gap? Of course it is, because gap is 2, j is 2, so they're equal. They're the same value. Then you check if L of J minus gap, what is J minus gap? J is 2, gap is 2. So J minus gap is going to be 0. So L of 0 is 12, is greater than or equal to temp, is greater than temp, sorry. Temp is 54, and yes, you have these values, and they are not, this condition is not met, which is why you basically move out of the loop, and you go back up. So here, you're saying that your I becomes 3, as you see over here. When I becomes 3, what basically happens is um, you're, you're incrementing, so you're moving your gap you're moving your element pointer to 2 and your other pointer which is the pointer minus gap is coming to 34 and um, let's see what happens over here you say in temp your temp becomes 2 because that is now pointing to 2 right now you check the condition the condition basically has to mean something right when i becomes equal to j uh, you you see value over here change your j is now 3 and what happens is um, you'll see what happens your value becomes different 34 and you still go further and, and, and you basically get all these other values. So this is how this algorithm actually works. Um, there, there is a little bit more to the variation of it, and I think it's pretty beautiful. This algorithm is one of the most interesting algorithms which I've come across because it takes the insertion sort, which actually already was a good, uh, good algorithm, and it just makes it way more, way more full and way more efficient. And, uh, and yeah, that's how this basically works. Um, um, if you wanna see, uh, more content like this please like the video share uh, with, with people who you think want to learn how the shell sort works and how the algorithm is and thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next video like share and subscribe peace